Hey everyone, today's scripture is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 9. And I'm going to read just the last couple verses in that section. Paul is writing here and he says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Now this is a really uplifting scripture. It's probably familiar to you, but one thing that we often forget when we're reading the Bible is that these authors, like Paul, were real people in a real world with real problems, kind of like us. Now Paul was experiencing a big problem. His problem, he was in prison. I find it really easy to believe that those who authored the Bible were writing in the perfect scenario. The big beautiful desk from Ikea, big fountain pen, you know, light shining in, their faces glowing as they, as they write, and maybe a halo around. I, I imagine these beautiful settings, but I find that often when I learn where a scripture was written, it helps me discern how to read that scripture. And that's really important for this letter to the Philippians because Paul wrote this letter in prison. Now, Paul's prison was not like the prisons we have today. You know, with those like sink, toilet combo things that are stainless steel and you know, you have a bed and you're served food. No, Paul's prison was basically like a dark death hole. It's like a cave that's cold and, and damp and with no bed and people had to come and bring him food or, or else he wouldn't be served any. This was a dark, hopeless place. And even in that dark hopelessness, Paul could write such an encouraging scripture. How is that even possible? I wonder if you're maybe experiencing a, a prison-like environment today. Maybe you're not in prison, but perhaps you have a relationship that feels like it's just trapping you. Or a situation at work that weighs really heavy that you don't know how to escape. If that's how you're feeling today, then why don't we look together at how Paul was able to write such encouragement amidst such sorrow and pain and disappointment. Paul reminds us of the importance of thanksgiving prayer. In verse six, he says, don't worry about anything, instead pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Thankfulness is a key for Paul and I think will be a key for you and I as we pursue God's peace. Because when I pray a prayer of thankfulness, it reminds me of all that God has done. It reminds me of what is true about who God is. And when I'm reminded of those things, not only does it encourage my heart, but it does something to my mind. Because look at the next verse. In verse eight, Paul gives us a list of things to fix our minds on. And all of the things from this list, things that are true, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, everything that Paul lists stems from who God is, from his character. So today, as, as you live and breathe in this world and navigate the difficulties of life, I want to encourage you to fix your mind on these things. Fix your mind on what is true about God. Pray a prayer of thankfulness. God, thank you for my family. Thank you for this job. Thank you for my breakfast, whatever it may be. And allow that thankfulness to posture your heart towards God and your mind towards God. And as we do that, we will lift our eyes off of all of the things that we need and begin to see how the truth about who God is fulfills our ultimate need. So may you be encouraged to fix your mind on the things of God and receive his peace today.